Hello, welcome to Problem Solving Part 1. Surviving Problem Solving is going to get us through a problem that we can do it without, without even thinking. Hopefully you'll get to the point where you are thinking about why are we dividing here, why are we multiplying here, and it all makes sense. We're going to cover some of those reasons why in a later video, but for now, if you're, if you're presented with a problem and you don't have any idea how to do it, here are some strategies that can get you through it. Now, for this first video, we're going to keep it simple, and here are some assumptions that we're going to make for this video. You already have some algebra skills. I'm not going to teach that in this video. You are using a star formula chart. You're, if you're not using a star formula chart, you're using some kind of formula chart that can get you through whatever problems you're supposed to be solving. Uh, if you're not allowed to use a formula chart or a cheat sheet of some sort, you probably should be watching another video where we talk about the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, because you're going to have to memorize formulas, and memorizing them is a lot easier if you understand them. Uh, these problems, or the problem, the one problem that we're going to do here, only require one formula. So we're not going to be plugging, solving for x and then plugging it into a formula for y. Uh, we'll do that in a later video also. Problem gives you all the information you need. When we talk about free fall, we're talking about an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. That's always true, so I don't have to tell you in a problem that, that that's the case. Again, another video, we're going to give you all the information you need here. And a problem does not give any distracting information. That means extra information that you don't need to solve the problem. These are uh, not going to have distractors in them. So here's the one problem that we'll be doing. A car travels at 35 meters per second for 10 seconds. How far did it travel? Okay, if you know the formula, like you know you're working on speed or velocity, and you know what the formula is going to be, you can go ahead and write that down right now. But let's just say I don't know it. How can I figure out what that is? I'm going to start by writing down information that I know. So let's say I don't know the formula, but I do know that it's going 35 meters per second. So, and I know that's a velocity. So my velocity is 35 meters per second. And I've got another number here, it's 10 seconds. Well, I know that's a time. And it's asking me for a distance. And, oops, sorry, the time is 10 seconds. And it's asking me for a distance. I don't know what that distance is. That's what it's asking me for. But I'm going to go ahead and put a spot for it anyway. Blank. And then I'm expecting that that is going to be in meters because this is the, the unit that we're starting off with. If you start off in meters and end in miles, you're probably having problems in there. All right, now, if I look at my, my store chart, I'm going to find that there's only one formula that has just these three things in them like this. And that is velocity equals distance over change in time. Now all I have to do is plug what I have already written down as my variables into the formula. This is substitution. So I'm going to substitute V for... 35, 35 for V, 35 meters per second equals my distance, which is unknown. So in algebra, when, you, when you're going to solve an equation, you're going to use an X, but we're actually solving for, for an actual thing here. So I'm going to put that V there to represent that we're solving for distance. And my change of time is 10 seconds. Now we're just going to use our algebra skills here. I need to get D by itself. That means I've got to do whatever the opposite of 10 seconds is, divided by, this is 10 divided by 10 seconds. I need to do the opposite of whatever that is, so that's just multiply it by 10 seconds and then it cancels out. Well that's fun, except I have to do it to both sides. I put it over here, 10 seconds. And just because I'm getting a little crowded here, I'm going to rewrite it, and I'm going to put the D first so everything's real pretty. 
So distance equals 10 seconds times 35 meters per second. And I can finish it up by multiplying 10 times 35, 350. Now I've multiplied the numbers, I've got to multiply the units. So a second is in the numerator here, and, oops, meant to underline that. Seconds is in the numerator here, and it's in a denominator here. So that is like saying seconds divided by seconds. So they cancel out and leave me with meters, is, which is what I would expect. But here I can either write it, the answer here, or I can box this answer in. I don't mind which way you do it as long as it's obvious to me and I'm not searching for your answer.